Are you thinking about buying an electric car, but you just want to see if anything better is around the corner? Well, stick around because I'm going to show you five Kias that are coming to our part of the world. I'm going to show you what's around the corner, what's coming in 2025, as well as what's on the horizon for 2026. You're with Mr. Cha, I'm Julian. Stick around, let's find out together if Kia is an electric car manufacturer worth waiting for and worth checking out. It's November 2024 and I'm in Taipei for the Asia Pacific edition of Kia EV Day. It's kind of an open house for the media to talk to Kia's senior management and get up close with the latest Kia EVs, both production ready ones and a couple that are still in the concept stage. What management is trying to get across today is that Kia wants to be a major player in the electric car world. It's aiming to sell 1.6 million EVs a year by 20. 30. That would make it slightly smaller than Tesla is today. And of course, it's still going to continue selling hybrid cars and combustion cars. But in order to get there in the EV world, they understand that they're going to have to launch new products at different price points. So let's start chronologically, guys. This EV5 is coming to you at the Singapore Motor Show in January. It's basically a medium SUV with five seats, so definitely more than a size down from the EV9, which has six seats and seven. Think of it as Kia's direct rival to the excellent Hyundai Ioniq 5, which sits on the same eGMP architecture, although the EV5 is a little bit more compact. It's just over 4.6 meters long and 1.875 meters wide, and the wheelbase is 2.75 meters. For comparison, the Ioniq 5's is a whopping 3 meters long. So I'm sure you've noticed all of the new Kia EV SUVs kind of take their cue from the EV9. So they're all very boxy, they've got upright lines, they also have some kind of sharp lines, but curvy surfaces as well. The headlights are kind of a signature thing and it's actually quite interesting to me that you've got this star map design on all of them, but look at the headlight cluster, it's so slender over here. And of course it wouldn't be a Kia without the tiger nose, so it's kind of reinterpreted here in terms of this light bar and it's kind of a digitalized tiger nose. It's the same at the back where the EV5 has prominent lamps and boxy flanks to emphasize its width. And overall, if you like what you get with the EV9, then you're probably going to like the EV5 because it kind of feels like a scaled down version. Especially here because it has the same cabin architecture, same setup. I mean, look, it's got these twin 12.3 inch touchscreens. Nice layer here of, I guess, virtual buttons. And very, very important, this physical controls for the aircon. It's extra important in this car because like in the EV9, there's actually a third screen over here which has climate controls. and. You just can't, there's just no way you can see them from behind the steering wheel, so it's extra handy to have these. In terms of the cabin architecture though, it is actually very nice and airy in here. I do like the colours that they've used for this car. Some of the grey on the steering wheel, for example, does look very nice. This part of the car I'm not so sure about because they've kind of made it feel a little bit like a bench in order to kind of facilitate a better a bit of communication between people. But there's no actual storage space under here. There's this, but it's just an armrest. And I think that they've kind of done something interesting here, but you don't have much utility in terms of keeping things and keeping them out of sight. So plenty of points for creativity, but minus points for storage. In the back, I of course have a lot of legroom because this is a dedicated electric car. So that comes to the flat floor as well. So I think three people are going to be reasonably comfortable back here. I'm not short on headroom as well. So, you know, typical electric car space packaging is a plus with this car. I do like certain other creative touches that they have with this car. The USB uh, charging port is here, for example, which is good because you're going to put your phone here when you charge it. And you have a flat floor, so you actually have space for quite a nice uh, drawer. But I think this is actually a cooler as well as um, kind of food warmer, whichever one you like. You can't do both at the same time. So don't put ice cream and coffee in there and keep them and then expect it to keep one cold and one hot. But otherwise, what I'm seeing is that this car is built for families and in terms of the amount of utility you get from this car, it should be pretty well satisfactory. So I think I'm happy here. Maybe I wouldn't be if I were a BYD salesman. There's good news back here because the boot is 513 liters, which is big enough to make this a practical family car. Although a lot of that space is actually underneath the boot floor. You do get 67 liters of space in the front, which should help keep things tidy back there. We're gonna get three versions of the EV5 in Singapore. A short range front wheel drive, long range front wheel drive, and a long range dual motor version with 308 horsepower. I don't know the exact details for Singapore yet, but I think the short range is gonna have a 64.2 kilowatt hour battery, and the long range will have 88.1 kilowatt hours tucked under its floor. 
Apparently, you're looking at 400 kilometers and more than 500 kilometers, respectively. But Singapore is getting a less powerful detuned version of the EV5. Other markets have a 217 horsepower front wheel drive version. We are getting a 110 kilowatt, that's 150 horsepower version, which should get it into category A. And I think that's going to help lower the price. So my target price for this is around about 190,000, certainly below 200,000. And if I'm correct, that could make the EV5 a very strong contender indeed. Further down the line is this smaller EV3. It is a size down from the EV5 and it's coming to you in the first quarter of 2026. Now, Kia's idea with this car is a really nice one. It is a compact electric car, but the philosophy is that it should get the features from the EV9. So it should have a lot of advanced driver assistance systems and it should be quite a comfortable car because it rides on the same platform as the EV9. That's the eGMP, E Global Modular Platform as the EV9. So since that is quite a comfortable car, I expect this to be pretty comfortable as well. The EV3 is actually quite a bit bigger than something like the Mini Ace Man or the Smart Hashtag 1. It's actually roughly the size of the BYD 803, which is the best-selling EV in Singapore by far. And just like the EV5, it is very recognizably a Kia. Same tiger nose, same boxy appearance, and I think for a small car, it really has a lot of presence. It's also playful. It has these concealed rear door handles, as well as a disconnected C-pillar. That boxy shape pays dividends in terms of a big boot for the class, 460 litres. And that doesn't even include the 25 litre frunk. So again, a very similar layout here, both to the EV9 and the EV5. And I think Kia is making use of a clever trick here because when you do the same layout, your customers do feel very comfortable upgrading from one car to another or swapping, let's say, from a combustion car into this newfangled electric car. So same layout means dual screens over here. I'm not sure if I'll be able to turn these on, but if I can, I should be able to show you that there is a third screen here for the climate controls. And um, you know, that again is a little bit fiddly because you can't actually see them from behind the wheel. But again, I do have physical switches over here. So that's a good thing. I really like these virtual buttons that Kia has been introducing lately. They are very, actually very neat and they do give you direct functionality to the touch screen. A couple more design flourishes I like about this cabin are the colors. They are kind of light and they give the cabin a very airy feel. And you've got interesting things like this Kia logo, which is kind of offset to the right over here. Now you've got a huge storage area over here and of course it's, it's colored quite brightly. So that's quite funky. This I think is an electric car for younger people. And again, a bit of a weird situation here because you've got this area here that has no storage at all, but you do have a kind of pull out tray. And I can't really figure out what this might be for. So maybe when you're kind of waiting for your car to charge, you can put your laptop here and do some work or something like that. Again, lots of creativity, but I'm not so sure about the practicality of this. Over in the back here, these rear seats don't actually do anything tricky. I don't think they kind of recline and they don't slide back and forth. So that minimizes a bit of the utility that you would get from this car, but there is no shortage of space for such a compact machine. I do have plenty of headroom, although if I was six feet tall, probably I well, I might brush this headliner over here, but no complaints about the leg room. Someone very tall in front of me has sat here, but I still have knee room. I've got a nice flat floor. So really that kind of adds to just the amount of space that you have in the back of the car. And it just minimizes that sense of feeling cramped. Some of the big car features that have made it into the EV3 would be things like, you know, USB charging over here, rear aircon vents, which are super, super important and actually getting quite rare in this segment of car in Singapore. And then you've got a nice airy looking cabin with the same kind of quirky design that makes sitting in the front of the EV3 so appealing. I don't really have the final spec for the EV3, but other markets have a short range version with 58.3 kilowatt hours. That can do 436 kilometers in WLTP testing. And then there's a long range with 81.4 kilowatt hours, and that's apparently good for 605 kilometers. Not bad at all. Again, there's no concrete details, but there's almost certainly going to be a category A COE version of this car. And if Cyclone Carriage can sell it for around about $165,000, then I think it would turn out to be one of the best selling Kias. I guess we'll find out in a year. Beyond that, we're going to see the EV4 make it into production and then make its way to Singapore, which is going to happen in the first quarter of 2026. Now, if you're sick of SUVs and you want something a little bit sleeker, the EV4 is it. And here's how Kia designer Kim Tae-kun describes it. 
Neither earth will set up nor a normal for you. Concept B4 is a symbol of our innovation. It has a fresh, bold, and expected design with a focus on a performance and a visual intent. Paired with an architectural, clean interior layout, surfaced with a product design like treatment. It is definitely an eye catching car. And I tell you what, even though it is a concept at this stage, I do expect Kia to carry over a lot of this into the production car. One thing that probably won't make it are the rear hinge doors. But when you look inside the concept car, two things stand out just how neat it is inside and how this kind of wraparound feel to it, either in terms of the ambient lighting, the rear seating, or even the shape of the headrests. At 4.73 meters long, the Concept EV4 is just about the length of a BMW 3 Series. It does have a long wheelbase of more than 2.8 meters, so it's definitely going to be spacious inside. And again, Kia is going to release both a short range and a long range version. The target for the short range is 430 kilometers on a single charge, with the long range version projected to do 630 kilometers. This apparently has 150 kilowatts, around about 204 horsepower, but hey, you never know, we may get a 110 kilowatt version for Singapore, so you can buy it with a category A COE, and if that happens, well, this is definitely going to be one of the coolest looking cars in category A. Finally, something a little bit different. This is a commercial vehicle, but it's highly configurable. It could be a minibus, a pickup truck, a panel van, or a panel van with a high roof. It's called the PV5, and that stands for it's called the PV5 and that stands for Purpose Built Vehicle 5 and it's kind of a nice idea. There aren't that many electric vehicles in the commercial vehicle space and I think Kia really wants a large slice of that pie. It is highly customizable so whatever kind of business you have, you should be able to buy this in the kind of configuration that suits your needs. This one here is a people mover version so it's full of seats and it has space for a wheelchair up front. This one might be the next big thing in ride hailing because, well, Kia has a partnership with Uber on that. And of course, Kia is also hoping that someone will build a robo taxi on the PV5 platform. And there's gonna be, say it with me, short range and long range versions with a target of 200 kilometers and 400 kilometers respectively for them. So there you have it, five new electric Kias all coming away within the next couple of years. Are you tempted? Well, I actually do want to say that so far, Kia's electric cars haven't actually sold all that well in Singapore. In the first 10 months of 2024, they've accounted for something like less than 1% of the EV market. And that's something I asked the president of Kia Asia Pacific about just to get a sense of how he feels. In Singapore market, there's very unique taxation system. And also, <laughs> I'm sorry, and also very difficult market. Yeah. But, uh, uh, you know, uh, today you saw that uh, we will expand our product lineup to the more affordable level of the vehicles. So with the launch of a little bit the lower price than the EV6 and EV9, I expect we can expand our uh, the, the, the market share in the Singapore market. My takeaway is that Kia does understand that if it wants to be a major player in the world of electric cars, it needs more products with more variety and more affordability. And I really think that's what I saw today. Hey, that's my quick and dirty look at Kia's upcoming EV plans. If you enjoyed that, please remember to subscribe. We are a new channel and we could really use your support. Meanwhile, thanks for watching. See you again.